So hello everyone and welcome to the presentation of the Master in Economic and Social Sciences, ESS in short. So let me introduce myself, I'm the director of the program. Um, my name is Antonella Trigari and uh, Professor Salvatore Nuna is the assistant or the deputy director, as I prefer to call him. You will meet uh, Salvatore in the Q&A session that will follow this uh, video presentation. So the first thing that I would like to do is to answer the questions of why you should choose the Master in Economic and Social Sciences. And before I get into the nature of the program, let me say from the start that ESS is a prestigious program, highly ranked in worldwide rankings. As you can see in, in the slide, according to the latest QS World uh, University rankings by subjects, Bocconi is 14th Europe and 16th worldwide in the fields of economics and econometrics. And as it will become clear shortly, these fields directly map into our program ESS. But what is this uh, course about? So the main objective of the program is to provide its students with a wide ranging and interdisciplinary training in economics in line with uh, frontier research in economics. In particular, the course seeks to offer and to develop an advanced knowledge of the economic theory and the quantitative methods, in particular, as we will discuss, mathematics, statistics, and econometrics, that are needed to critically interpret economic and social processes from theoretical and an applied perspective, and both at the individual level and at the aggregate global level. Now, the economic theory and the theoretical models are needed to study the mechanisms at play to discipline our understanding of the effects of individual actions, economic shocks, and public policies, effects that may actually turn out to be counterintuitive. And this is precisely why we need uh, to gain economic intuition via a rigorous modeling of the channels and the forces that shape the various outcomes. Now, turning to the quantitative methods, mathematics is the language that we use to write those models, while uh, statistics and econometrics are needed to bring the models to the data, to test whether the hypotheses that we formulate are verified, are supported by the empirical evidence. And importantly, uh, econometrics allow us, allows us to uh, establish the direction of causality. What causes what in an environment where everything is essentially endogenous, which, which establishing causality is, is a major challenge in economics and other social sciences. So the way you have to think about ESS is the following. We, we are going to provide you with solid analytical skills and rigorous methods to answer questions scientifically and critically. And then it's up to you to choose which questions you deem most interesting, most relevant, most stimulating, most important to, to change and improve the real world. And then you will be able to answer those questions by applying the learned methods. Now the program blend economics with excursions into other social sciences, among which, for example, psychology, sociology, or economic histories. Now this happens for two main reasons. The first is that over the years, economists have developed um, skills and scientific methods that are actually useful to, to answer questions that used to be investigated only by other social scientists. Now, the second is that many economic and social phenomena cannot be um, understood in isolation, but rather require 
uh, an interdisciplinary view. And let me give you two examples. <clears throat> the first one is about a uh, rapidly uh, growing area of research at the intersection of uh, psychology and finance. And in this research area, uh, researchers investigate the, the influence of cognitive factors on the behavior of agents and investors. Think about uh, non-rational beliefs, think about limited attention or limited memory. And then uh, they have used these insights to explain phenomena such as, for example, the sudden rise and fall of housing prices, which is at the heart of the of the financial of the, of the recent financial crisis of the Great Recession in 2007 2009, which would have otherwise been uh, hard to rationalize. Now, a second example is the COVID-19 crisis and the need in particular to approach it simultaneously from an epidemiological and an economic perspective. Now, many micro and macroeconomists are actually working with, together with epidemiology, epidemiologists to write what um, are now called, referred to in the literature as eco-AP models of COVID-19. Now, what, what this model do is to explore and try to understand the complex two-way feedback between uh, the epidemic and the economy. Let me uh, have an example. On one side, the epidemic is going to have economic consequences, for example, in terms of job losses in, uh, for workers in the shutdown social sectors. But on the other side, economic decisions, for example, labor supply decisions uh, in presence of infection risks, so whether workers are willing to supply labor in presence of that risk, are going to determine the extent of the spread of the virus. Now, taking into account these interactions is obviously key when it comes to formulating optimal policies that are going to trade off uh, outcomes um, in terms of health and, uh, and the economy. Now, how do we do to gain such interdisciplinary vision and knowledge? We do it by allowing students to build a strongly customized and interdisciplinary curriculum in two different ways. The first one is through the choice of electives. And the second one is through the participation to a documents, initiatives uh, that can be tailored to the specific scientific research interests of the students or to the professional aspirations of the students. And I will, will have a few examples in, in a bit of time. So to summarize, S can, uh, can really be described, I think, with three keywords. The first is analytical quantitative skills. The first, the second is flexibility and interdisciplinarity. And the third is critical thinking. And let me spend a minute on this third point. So once a brilliant ESS student uh, in, in, in a testimonial uh, said, I think very appropriately, that ESS does not teach how and what, but rather why. So this is to say that ESS is the objective of preparing students to answer ambitious and complex research questions, to develop a specific form of mentis, a, a way of thinking, a way of reasoning that does not take anything for granted. It teaches students to, to challenge um, all questions, sorry, to, to challenge answers to existing answers to all questions and to confront new questions. But uh, how do, do we do that in terms of the program structure, in terms of the study plan? So let me uh, guide you through this uh, slide. So and on top you see uh, a description of the first year which is going to be dedicated in, in large part to developing the quantitative skills via 
courses in quantitative methods, and these courses are emphasized in red. You see in the first semester math and statistics, and in the second semester, econometrics. Now, these are tough, challenging courses, but note that we do offer pre-courses, and these are highly appreciated by the students on these subjects before the academic year starts. During the first year, students also take a course in green, you can see it on this line name, Institution, Government and Society, which is declined in two modules. In the first semester, module one is going to introduce students to research design methods. So the idea is to teach students how to formulate a meaningful empirical research questions and how to answer to it, which type of study to conduct, how to collect the data and which type of statistical analysis to apply. Module uh, the second module in study in the, in the second semester <clears throat> focuses on taking a broad perspective on the role and the organization of the state, of the government, of institution, of the society as a whole within economic systems, also taking um, an, an historical perspective. During the first year in the first semester, now we turn to the blue items, Students also take competition law and practice. This is a rather applied course that provides an advanced knowledge of the legal rules in the US and in Europe that have been written to, to prevent uh, business practices that could impair the well-functioning of markets. Think about anti-competitive practice, uh, for example. This is, as I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an applied course with case studies that connects very well to many of the career options that are available to, to ESS students. And finally, uh, also in the first year, students take a behavioral skills seminar course, which focuses on uh, soft skills, and in particular related to teamwork, team building, team dynamics, and as you might be aware, this kind of skills are on, on high and raising demand in the labor market, and this is why this, this additional course has been introduced uh, in the program in recent years. Now, starting from the second semester of the first year and through the entire second year, students choose seven electives, three plus four. You see this in violet. Now, uh, among these seven electives, four are going to be partially constrained um, as they have to be selected in three lists. Let me show you the, the three lists that are organized by areas. So in particular, students have to choose at least two courses in the first list, which is about general economics, and you find courses such as advanced macro or advanced micro. Then they need to pick at least one course in the second green list, applied economics. There you find courses like uh, uh, public economics, labor economics, uh, industrial economics and macroeconometrics and microeconometrics, but also courses like psychology, economic analysis and behavioral finance, or interesting, a recent um, addition to the program, to the, to the choices, economic analysis of crime. And finally, at least one course has to be picked by the third list, with, which collects courses in the, in the social and quantitative fields, two examples, Bayesian statistical methods and politics of conflict. Now, the remaining three electives out of the seven are completely free, and they can be chosen, of course, from these three ESS lists that we just described. They can also be chosen, however, among all the electives offered at Bocconi in other Master of Sciences. They can be chosen among those courses offered 
on exchange in case students uh, choose to do the ex to participate to the exchange program and also and i will say something more about that in a couple of minutes among uh, phd courses now the remaining of the second here which is um, described in the bottom part of the slide is dedicated to the compulsory internship and to the writing of the master thesis, as well as to the study of two foreign languages. The second year is also the time in which students might choose to participate to an exchange program um, at top graduate schools, such as, for example, Boston University, or Yale University, with whom we ESS has a, has a, a particular arrangement that allows um, deserving students to, to, to go there for, for one year and take uh, PhD courses, first year PhD courses. Students finally also have the opportunity to earn either a double degree or a joint degree uh, at four uh, foreign university. The first one is HSC in Paris. The second is Keio University in Tokyo, McGimo in Moscow, and UCL Louvain in Brussels. And the way they do that is by spending the second year of the master at the foreign university. Now, as I was mentioning uh, before, some highly motivated and deserving students, a limited number of them, can also uh, gain credits from taking higher level courses. That is, courses offered within uh, four PhD programs at Bocconi. These are the PhD in economics and finance, the PhD in statistics and computer science, the PhD in business administration and management, and the PhD in social and political sciences. Now, the first two programs listed in the slide and the last one essentially open all their courses to ESS students who incidentally do pretty well when they attend those courses while the third program, the third PhD program, the one in business administration management, only offers selected courses that are closer in terms of, of uh, topics and uh, subject and, uh, you know, of interest to ESS students. So, for example, social network analysis, economics of innovation, technological change, and experimental methods. Now, <clears throat> I already mentioned that ESS students can customize their academic curriculum also through a doc dedicated events and initiative that uh, basically uh, have the objective of deepening the knowledge in specific research areas, in particular, making contact with frontier and interdisciplinary research. And, getting in close contact with uh, what it means to, to do research and what researchers actually do. So let me, let me cite three uh, uh, as example of these opportunities. So first of all, we, we, we offer high-level magisterial lectures on, on topics that are relevant to ESS students in, in a broad sense. So this could be lectures in, in history of economic thoughts, topics that are of current policy relevance, or interdisciplinary research, for example, research in neuroeconomics. And uh, as an example, so last year we had um, Tommaso, Professor Tommaso Nanicini, who is, uh, is a professor of political economy but at Bocconi, but is currently on leave. Uh, as he is uh, a member of the I Italian Senate, and he gave uh, an interesting lecture on, uh, based on his own experience on how to reconcile um, academic work and academic results in political economy with 
actual policy making, with the, the actual work of those who are policy makers. Now, a second initiative is called ESS Presents, Professor XXX, that's the name of the professor. Now, within this initiative, Bocconi faculty members present to ESS students their own research, and then they open the floor to uh, questions and answer and a discussion. Now, <clears throat> this is a new initiative that was actually proposed by the students, and I, 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 I thought that it was a very interesting proposal, and so we, we proceeded uh, following their suggestion. And it, it's, it, it has been introduced to, to, with the idea, it's a virtual, now it has a, it has a virtual format, it has been introduced with the idea of, uh, of making up for the lost uh, interaction due to the social distancing and shut down uh, measures that we have been experiencing in, in the last year. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's it rather successful, so we, we are thinking of, of re-proposing it again also next year. Finally, uh, I would like to mention, mention the BITSA IGER Visiting Students Initiative. So BITSA and IGER are two research centers at Bocconi. <clears throat> ESS students accepted into the program have the opportunity of working in close contact with economists. They are, in particular, they are assigned uh, a mentor with whom they discuss uh, you know, which elective to choose, how to build their own uh, CV, uh, what kind of opportunity to, to seize. Uh, they are also assigned actually an office together so close to, to to where the faculty actually has, has uh, their offices, so so as to have them uh, really integrated into the into the Bocconi uh, academic community. Now, um, this program um, offered the students. Uh, you know, many, many possibilities to, to work with faculty members. So students from this program really benefit from a strong relation with, with, with the faculty and with the research centers at Bocconi. And th there are several ways here is, I've listed them already, went through the first um, possibility. The second one, field projects, concerns the possibility of conducting Remember, in the second year, there is a compulsory internship, and that internship can also be conducted at one of the Bocconi Research Centers, and in that case, we call it a field project. Um, research assistant activity. So, so this, this is typically toward the end of the coursework in the second year. Many ESS students work as paid a race on ongoing research projects of the faculty. In-depth studies, that, that's another way to, to get to know our uh, fabulous uh, faculty. So we allow students to substitute one elective with two in-depth studies. So what are these in-depth studies? These are short research projects. Um, on teams that have been uh, uh, treated during a specific course that the student has already attended. And the research, uh, the small research project is conducted under the supervision of the professor responsible for the course and the subject is agreed uh, together with the professor. And finally, a very natural way to to interact with the faculty is the time of the writing of the master thesis. <clears throat> now, this, this, these theses are typically high quality pieces of work, of original research, that are often not too far from a scientific paper in economics uh, that, you know, would be um, submitted to economic journals, and sometimes uh, the thesis work even result in co-authorship between the student and the faculty member. 
So <clears throat> what I want to do now is to describe to, to you the career options and the opportunities available to ESS students. Now, in general, the, 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 the most natural career outcomes for ESS students are professions with high research content. Now, these jobs, however, can take place in a large variety of environments, ranging from international organizations, research centers in the private or in the public center, sectors, consulting firms, even the economic press, or through the pursuit of academic careers in the areas of economics, other social sciences, and also statistical analysis or applied math. There are then a number of professional contexts in which economists are strongly but also very naturally required. And here I have three examples, so regulatory authorities, central banks, as well as nonprofit organizations um, working on the field in both um, developing and developed countries. Now, historically, uh, ESS students have also taken and, and continue to do so company positions that require high level analytical skills and critical thinking. And this is precisely the case for the position for the, the common position actually among ESS students of management consultant, especially as a strategy consultant. So I would like to mention that a non-negligible number of the most influential strategy consultants or managers in Italy actually have been trained at ESS, or I should say at DES, which is, uh, which is how the program was previously called when it was held in Italian. The name was changed a few years ago. Only. Now, the second type of position, most common position, is, is of course that of an economist, but again, in a variety of uh, different environment and different type of institutions. Um, ESS students may also work, depending on how they uh, tailor their CVs, as applied statisticians, econometricians, or data scientists. There is actually a growing demand for um, economists with knowledge, some knowledge on data sciences within companies, uh, but also other types of organizations. And finally, as students also, and in relatively important numbers, continue as PhD candidates in economics or other social uh, or quantitative sciences. And I'm going to say something more about that in a second. Now, what I would like to give you is some numbers. So these are numbers about uh, placement. And they are organized um, in uh, two moments. So on the left side, you see data uh, on graduation day in blue. And on the right side, you see data uh, one year after graduation in red. So on graduation day, about 70% of ESS graduates, among those, of course, who are not continuing their studies, are already employed. And by that day, <clears throat> ESS students have uh, been invited to an average number of job interviews, which is equal to 3.3, and obtain an average number of job offers equal to 1.5. So this, this is a extremely positive pictures in terms of placement. If you, if you move to one year after graduations, um, almost the entirety of the, of the graduates is employed, 97.8%. And of this, about half is employed abroad, which uh, confirms the 
international vocation of the program, uh, which is also reflected in the relatively high percentage of international students uh, if compared to, to other master programs at Bocconi. Now, finally, um, we note that uh, one year after graduation, about 20% of ESS students are enrolled in a postgraduate educational program to continue their studies. Now, <coughs> if we sum to them, those uh, ESS graduates who are employed at higher level educational institution, it means employed at university, typically as research assistants, or they are employed in pre-docs while they work on their applications to PhD programs, then we get to a number of, to a percentage of 32.5% of ESS graduates who most likely are continuing uh, with their studies. Now, based on the available data, I would say that a fair estimate is that about one third of ESS students continues with their studies, most typically, but not only with a PhD in economics. And every year, ESS places top students at the best uh, graduate programs around the world. Uh, among the top European programs, you see, for example, the London School of Economics, Oxford, Pompeo Fabra in Barcelona, um, you see UCL uh, in London, uh, Sciences Po in Paris. And also the top US program every year made a selection uh, of our students. That, that's, of course, uh, difficult, but we do send uh, every year a uh, relevant number of students to the top U.S. schools such as Harvard, MIT, Northwestern, Princeton, Yale, Berkeley, etc. You can see uh, the list uh, the, in, in the slide. Now, <clears throat> and this is going to be my last slide, the, the largest two-thirds of our ESS students choose a different path, an academic professional path. And in this slide, you see a non-exhaustive but representative list of the top employers for ESS students. So the main takeaway from, from this list is the following, is that career option for ESS students include positions at top prestigious employers, but also cover a very wide, broad, and extensive range of opportunities. Indeed, the list features, um, first, the top consulting firms worldwide. You see among these McKinsey, Boston Consulting Group, Bain & Company, Accenture, PricewaterhouseCooper, Ernst & Young. You see uh, investment banks, for example, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, BNP Paribas, and Societe Generale. You see big firms, for example, uh, Luxottica and Amazon, economic consulting firms, Compax Lexicon and Frontier Economics, both based in London. We also see international organizations, for example, the European Central Bank, the European Investment Bank, Banca d'Italia, and they are not in the list, but many other national central banks. You see the OECD and the European Commission, as well as think tanks and NGOs. For example, we have Brac Uganda, Bruegel, the Osservatorio dei Conti Pubblici Italiani, uh, which has been um, founded by Cottarelli, and Innovation for Poverty Action. So, so I, I would like to conclude by saying, by reporting what employers um, uh, say, and we, we do have regular meetings with uh, our employers, um, so what they say is that the professional success of ESS students comes from the fact that they are uniquely skilled 
when it comes to learning on the job, uh, when it comes to thinking critically, and when it comes to analytical skills, when it comes to the capability of adapting to, to novel challenges, and, and also to, to move the, the frontier of knowledge forward in whatever area they're actually uh, employed. So this is the conclusion of this short video. I, I thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to, to answer your questions uh, in, a, in a few minutes together with Professor Salvatore Munari. So see you soon.